So, yesterday I did a video where I talked about that, you know, I was glad that they put the Sparity, Spike, and, you know, Rarity, Relationship, Friendship, uh, and My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Um, not just the cartoon, but, you know, the comics and, you know, other merchandise as well. And I want to follow that up by also talking about another favorite ship of mine, and I think you all know what it is, just by the title, and that is Sonic and Sally. And I know I've gushed about them before, I've talked about them highly before, but I, I think it's worth repeating that, you know, along with a lot of fans, I'm just happy that this, you know, this pairing, this ship, was included in the franchise from almost the beginning. Um, and I, I know that some people will debate that and say this this is who he was with first, that's who he was with first, it's not canon, it's not this, you know, I get that. But here's the thing, when, when you have a show and then a comic book um, to uh, follow up on with, or at least to, you know, at the time be showcased at the same, at the same moment, um, it, it's hard to argue fans... Um, love for the ship for the appreciation for it i mean yeah there have been times as i've mentioned before and many people have mentioned before that there have been some decisions that have been made uh concerning this pairing that have gone very very unpopular been been very uh controversial if you will i mean when you look at from 134 to at least i would say 150 56, 157, um, and, and the fact that, you know, despite how you feel about the guy, you know, Ian Flynn um, was the one that kind of salvaged what was damaged, if you will, for a time, you know, that between 134 and 156, 157, the, those were not very good years, we'll put it that way, I mean, not very good issues, or a good time frame, because, you know, you had Sonic and Sally kind of not getting along too much and everything. They, I mean, they were still technically friends, but very, like, that friendship was on thin ice. And then on top, of, yeah, on top of that, you had the confusion of what was going on with Antoine and Bunny until that was revealed as to the reason behind that later on. You know, to me, it just felt like it was not a good time in the book. I mean, the stories were all right, but from a relationship standpoint, especially those that we cared about, it was not a good time. It was not a good moment. But besides that, you know, a lot of us still loved the ship and we still appreciated what we got beforehand and even what we got afterwards and what we got, you know, way before that in, in the animated series or around the same time when it was also being published, you know, along with it, you know, the comic and the series is what I'm trying to say. You know, we appreciated it. And, and the fact that we knew right off the bat that these two were going to be together, um, you know, even with season one, you know, teasing, you know, them, you know, you know, uh, having f friendly banter and fl flirting kind of deal, especially like even with the heads or tails pilot. I mean, we knew, we all knew. I mean, even with the very first issue of the Archie comics, issue zero, if you will, and going on to the comic when it became an ongoing series, we knew that these two were going to be together. It was just, it was just, you know, written up. In a way that, you know, it it was obvious, obviously evident. But you know, even during the, you know, the light-hearted comedic tone of the early days of the comic, you know, they tried to play it off like, yeah, you know, it's gonna happen, but we're not saying it's gonna happen. Yes, the characters are indicating they have these feelings for each other, but they haven't really, you know, come out and truly expressed them, except for maybe Sally giving Sonic a kiss here and there, and you know. You know, whatever the case, whatever the situation was during the early portion of the comics, it, you know, an excuse they came up with, it's like, yeah, you could say that all you want, but we know the truth. <laughs> you know, even being young kids, being young teens and, you know, kids and late teens getting into the book or try, checking the book out for, you know, just to see what it's about. You know, we, it was pretty evident from the get-go, pretty evident from the get-go. I mean... I mean, even with the the first season, like I said, you know, the the first step, the pilot, heads or tails, and then afterwards, you know, it's like, come on, we we knew these two were going to end up together. I mean, the fact that Sonic told Sally when she was temporarily controlled along with Bunny by Robotnik because of that crystal, that magic crystal, whatever it is, that he was able to, you know, 
uh, reverse the effects on to restore them, for, or basically reverse the effects on to restore them. Um, basically, you know, you have Sonic coming out and saying, you know, trying to tell Sal, it's me, Sonic, your best bud, bud, your good friend, your main squeeze, you know. You know, the way he said main squeeze, like, your best bud, your best friend, your main squeeze, you know. It's like, it's like even there you knew these two were going to be together. And then the way they, you know, the, the way they kind of made out with each other, you know, Sally giving him a kiss the way she did, and, him, and then him kind of responding back with his own and, and hooked on Sonics. I mean, I mean, come on, we, we knew. We knew. I mean, and sometimes the banter they would have on the show and in the comics as well, besides, like I said, that time frame that I mentioned of 134 until about 156, 157, mainly 160, you know, the banter that they had was, yeah, it was a little uh, childish at times, but it was a friendly banter. It was a friendly, argumental banter. And, and yeah, sometimes Sally did stick her gr uh, stand her ground on some of the things she said. I mean, you look at, what is it, um, Warp Sonic, I think, you know, when they make Griff, and Sal, Sally says, you know, she's not his girl, and it's like, come on, you you can have characters say that all the time. You know the truth is, you know, hitting you right in the face. You, the truth is hitting you right in the face, and you know they just haven't really pulled the trigger on that truth being acknowledged. And eventually they did pull the trigger on, you know, being acknowledged in season two. You know, I mean, the way she kissed him after he had his... You know, memories restored, uh, thanks to a power ring. And, and then, you know, the fact that when you look at Doomsday Project, you know, and Sonic once again wants to go solo, and then she finally tells him, you know, it emphasizes, hey, we're in this together, just to make him realize, oh, now I get it kind of deal. You know, I mean, come on. It's like, you know, we knew even before then, in season one, and, you know, sometimes season two, with the moments and everything, that they were going to be together. And that's what made it fun for us. The fact that you would, you know, tease it, but you teased it in a way, or you hinted at it, and you hinted at it, at it in a way that, you know, we knew as fans it was going to happen. It was going to happen no matter what. And, you know, even with the comics, like I said, anytime the comics would, you know, touch upon it and everything, it's like, you know, we, we were happy to, to see any evidence of it. You know, even if it wasn't, you know, clear as day until certain issues were published, that, you know, we already knew these two were an item. No no matter what the situation. No matter what the situation. I mean, it's basically the classic tale of childhood friends becoming more than that as they get older. And that's what it was. I mean, yeah, you could create all the drama in the comics that you wanted, but we all knew that, you know, they weren't, you know, just, just by the fact that they were played up the way they were, you know, as a couple, like, you could break them up, you could do this, you could do that, you could roboticize, weaponize one of them, whatever the case is. The fact is, we always knew that they were going to be together, or they were an item, they were a couple. I mean, the fact that Sonic, the way he expresses seeing Sally flesh and blood again in 256, it's like, come on. You know, you may try to you know, uh, basically hinted the fact that Sally's going to go all bisexual with Nicole and everything later on. But seriously, you know, a lot of us know that had the, oh, a lot of us feel that had the comic continued without any interruptions, that yeah, we were probably going to get these two back together uh, in the 300 issues had that happened. But unfortunately, the, the comic was canceled, so we never got that possibility. All we got was, you know, the fact that, you know, they would have friendly banter, flirtatious banter, maybe here and there. But it was always like indicated that, you know, Sally was bisexual, she'd be going with Nicole, stuff like that. Spark of Life tried to, you know, pretty much back that up. You know, Ian Flynn and you know, and Aaliyah Baker come out and say that they were surprised that they got blatant, they got away with it away with it so blatantly. You know, you could say all that, you could show all that and everything, but the thing is, you know as a writer, you know, and you know, you know as fans that eventually you gotta go back to what made you know, made the comic popular. One of the things, one of the status quo that made the popular a uh, comic popular and beloved by a lot of folks, and that was Sonic and Sally being together. I mean, I get, I get and understand, you know, you know where Ian's coming from when he said, you know, he's just getting sick and tired of it. It's because of the fact that the fans go back and forth on it, and you know, some want to say it's not official, it shouldn't be. Some are saying it is, and I think. 
in all honesty, I think all he really wants from them is for them to agree that, okay, in the comics and the cartoon, yes, Sally and Sonic are an item, and we'll leave it at that. But outside of that, they're not. That's all they have to do. Just, just leave it at that. And I'm sure if they would have, Ian wouldn't have had a problem continuing it. But, again, but again, it's all these kind of things that, you know, the ups and the downs and everything, you know, that, you know, uh, makes, us, makes us appreciate this fan, this ship a lot more. I mean, it's one of the reasons I enjoyed Sonic Saturday AM. It's one of the reasons I enjoyed the comic. I mean, I've said on many occasions... When 123 showed us the cover of what it was going to be, and I got 123 physically in my hand, I was happy. I was living in Kansas, in Lawrence, Kansas, on my own at the time, um, when it came out. But I was happy. In fact, I kind of rolled around the floor a little bit, going like, yes, yes, yes. You know, because this is what was meant to be. It's like, now you got it. Now you're back to the status quo. You know, you shouldn't have changed it. And, you know, I even, and even though I didn't do something similar like that with 222, I still felt a sense of happiness and pride when it happened there. The point is, you know, a lot of us as fans are glad that this ship was a part of the Sonic franchise and still is to this day. I mean, how many fans, you know, as we speak, are hashtag rallying for Sally to get her in more Sonic media, you know, besides just, you know, the Archie books, the Sonic Set of Yam, and all the other stuff that came before... How many fans are basically saying, hey, let's get her in there. We want her in there. You know, there's a lot. And that's why you see the hashtag Rally for Sally, you know, trending so much. Because they want her back. And it's all because of the fact that they love seeing her paired up with Sonic. And, you know, you know, and, and basically because they feel that's the right, you know, that's the right direction to go in. No matter what, you know, matter what, you know, matter what media, you know, it takes part in. And this is why a lot of fans are hoping Sonic Prime, coming out next year on Netflix, we get an appearance by her in the Freedom Fighters. This is why, with any future Sonic uh, big screen movie, that perhaps a mid-credit or post-credit scene, we see her show up in, you know, out of a shadowy silhouette to kind of indicate she's going to show up soon again. All because of the fact that they know having her along with Sonic is... The best direction to go in because of what they got in the show what they got in the comics and you know it just feels like you know with her not being with sonic it's like a, there's something missing it's like you know it's like the puzzle is not complete and once she's and but when she's involved or people picture her as being involved that's when they feel like the puzzle is complete that things are right you know with the sonic world uh you know when it comes to the fandom but overall, as a fan, like I said, I do appreciate, you know, seeing, I'm, I'm just, I do appreciate and am appreciative, I should say, and I'm glad that this f ship is part of the franchise uh, from, be from the very beginning up until now, no matter what people say, you know, I know, again, I, well, let me correct myself, I, you know, I understand that there are people that are going to have the differences, there's no doubt, but as far as I'm concerned, no matter what they say, I'm going to support it. And I know millions of other fans are going to support it. So, yeah, I'm just glad to have it in the franchise. And I hope, I do, I do hope, honestly, that we get her and the Freedom Fighters, you know, showing up in future medias down the line. Because I think there's still a market for them to, you know, to be appealing to, to the audience. I really do. And I think Sega of America, those working on Sonic Prime, those working on the movie, those working at IDW, and they know who they are. <laughs> Uh, realize that as well. But what do you guys think? What are your thoughts on Sonic and Sally as a ship? Were you glad that they became part of the Sonic franchise from the very beginning? You know, how do you feel about them, you know, overall? What did you think of some of the ups and downs they went through? And what do you hope for them in the future? Let me know down below. Oh, um, hopefully you comment, you know, during this live chat, during the premiere of this. Uh, but again, comment below, live chat during the premiere if you've already have. Check out my Teespring store where you can actually find one of the newer items being a hashtag Riley for Sally item. Uh, on various uh, uh, platforms there, you know, various um, items, shirts, mugs, you can name them. Uh, check that out there. As well as check out me, check me out at patreon.com, BW Roses. Check me out at BW Roses Discussions, you know, on all your favorite audio platforms. 
uh, for the podcast, except for Pandora. Check me out at BW Roses on Vimo as well. But again, let me know what your thoughts are. But like I said, in closing, I am glad as a fan that this ship is part of the Sonic franchise. And I hope to see more of it, or at least Sally and the Freedom Fighters uh, themselves, in the near future. Talk to you all later.